Um, you know, I feel that pre, pre-progression or relapse, um, you know, of course we're still focusing on energy conservation techniques to not push somebody into a exacerbation, um, but also trying to really build up our skills so if they do have a relapse, again, we're starting from kind of a higher point or um, strength level. Um, Similarly though, post relapse, we have to be maybe a bit more um, conservative at first, but if our patients are admitted to the hospital, maybe they need um, IV steroids or something like that, um, they, we try to get them through our inpatient rehab first so they have a higher intensity immediately following the relapse um, and then we're able to see them. I work in an outpatient setting so I don't have the luxury of seeing a patient four or five days a week for a really short period of time like an inpatient rehab setting. Um, we tend to only see our patients one to two times a week. Um, and fatigue plays a factor in that too. We're working with people that are, are very sensitive to that. Um, but in that moment, we're trying to figure out, are there any new deficits that occurred and kind of stuck with the patient post relapse that we now need to put on kind of our therapy plate to figure out because oftentimes maybe they didn't have swallowing issues pre and now post they are. Um, maybe they have a new lesion um, and they're, and, uh, kind of that region of the brain that's impacting it at the brain stem. Um, or maybe now they have memory deficits and they didn't have memory deficits before. So we're kind of navigating new terrain, but then also reassessing the previous skills um, that we were working on and seeing if there's been a need to decline or kind of staying stagnant. Yeah, I think it's so challenging because even the best neurologist only gets a certain amount of time with the patient, right? And so they're gonna be concerned with what meds are working or not working, how is the latest MRI looking, um, different medical needs like that. So in such a short period of time, it can be difficult for them to then assess their physical function, their um, upper extremity functions, spasticity, speech, language, cognition, swallowing. Um, But I think what's important is for neurologists just and other providers, referring providers as well, your nurse practitioners and APRNs, um, kind of knowing what's available in the area and almost just kind of sending, like if you're gonna send to rehab, send why not send to all three disciplines? Um, let us get at the very least baseline assessment so then six months down the road, we can reassess and kind of get this rehab pattern, just like you see your neurologist probably twice a year or your dentist two to three times a year, why can't rehab professionals kind of take on that same role? Um, and so we're really trying to, to advocate and, and do that, but it's, it's not easy. Um, and I think sometimes like neurologists or referring physicians will say, oh, they need rehab, even if they spell out in their note it was a cognitive change or difficulty swallowing. Um, they'll send, like some, whoever does the orders, it will be a PT order. And so then the PT gets them, and hopefully that PT also has their kind of um, toolbox and can say, ooh, okay, I need, I need to send you to a speech language pathologist to get this looked at. And that happens a lot in our setting as well, where the PT sees them first and then is like, mm, no, you really needed speech for this. And we can always find things to work on. I think when it becomes bad enough where they're having trouble actually hearing them and having a conversation or um, the swallowing is bad enough that the patient is recognizing this is happening, I'm not eating anymore, I've lost weight, or they've developed pneumonia from aspiration, um, I feel like it's getting better in terms of referral sources overall just because we're conversating about it more. Um, But in the beginning, um, even when I first started at our clinic, the previous SLP before me maybe had like three to four hours of MS care a week. And over, I've worked now with the the center for going on eight years now with direct MS care and I've built it to a full-time caseload. Um, So it just shows that it was so under-referred and under-educated. so, but I do feel that it, they tend to not get to me until it's like a big enough deal that 
they have to. Like there's no, oh, well, it's fine. It's every so often, but that's part of MS is that intermittent kind of change and debilitation.